Public Service for 57 at 61 calls we were contacted on and confirmed. We they asked, but we know why they got contacted. It says they did. They contacted you. So it says they contacted, they read the, the, uh, the EDFAR. So the EDFAR shows that the officers contacted them on all of those four cases. And they even included a name on the MEU officer, and then it, it was not provided. So in four cases of the 61, only 57, it's 85 percent. I mean, 83 percent. But still, there are there are four cases where officers on their EDFAR said they contacted Officer So and So from MEU, so it would be providing the service, and it did not. It didn't show. Well, they said the service was to give me advice as well. So yeah. advice or so maybe. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, December 10th, 2019. It is 9.30. This is a regular scheduled meeting of the Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Good morning. Let the record reflect that Commissioners Stecker, Soberoff, Bonner are present and we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Uh, the first item on the agenda is the department's report relative to various donations. Commissioners, are there questions on item A? No. Are there public comment cards? Yes, we have two, Adam Smith and Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman. First of all, good morning, Ms. Decker and the other jackasses involved in this commission. The regular agenda items, item 1A, as I told Terry Tornick last night in Pasadena, the department's report dated December 3rd, 2019, of various donations valued, valued at the top of the chart. $16,000 from special interest motherfuckers who've been destroying the city and the state of California for various reasons. And because of the area's divisions, and let me go back and set on the record, boy, pussy, cunt number 190319, as I indicated into the record, Brandenburg versus Ohio, U.S. 395, 444-1969. Constitutional betterment. And I know you could do better when it comes to the goddamn motherfucking monies that you benefit for your programs and services. But I'm here to make a benefit and program in behalf of the rank and files. They need a fucking stipend job increase in pay, motherfuckers. That's what they need. That's the benefit of the donations. So as long as there's going to be various donations, you tell that special inch motherfucker developers to put some more money in, into the retirement of a rank and file, the great men and You're women. You're just not on topic, Mr. Herman. Well, I'm on department's report. And the recommendation for the board's action, approve the department's report, and accept those donations. Now, don't interrupt me when I speak, woman. I'm the man of this house. I am the legislative body. Ralph and Brown Act. Herman, thank you. Mr. Smith, your turn. Good morning. Um, Good morning. So... Now that all the donations are always looped into one um, agenda item, we have two minutes to speak to 63 pages of um, reports on over $100,000 in donations. I realize that they're 
at least on paper, mostly going to um, holiday parties. But, you know, there's, there's, these aren't like foundations. We don't know who's donating that money. Um, I feel like that's problematic. I'll just dig into a couple that I see. The first one, letter A, is for a donation for a holiday party at the Jonathan Club. And, you know, with all the transparency that the LAPD always talks about, I find it interesting that they're having a holiday party at a social club that didn't actually allow black members until 1986, or Jewish people, or women. Um, so it kind of speaks to either they don't, the department doesn't care that this is kind of the, the kind of place that they're having a holiday party. Um, and Mr. Bonner, number C, the Van Nuys donation um, for a holiday party in the Baker to Vegas relay. It also says for four SIM cards and uh, the card activation of those SIM cards for cameras placed at problem locations within Van Nuys area. And I'm just wondering if you know what makes those locations in Van Nuys problem areas. What are those cameras actually looking at? Um, and we won't get an answer, but and this will be approved, but those are the kind of questions that come up and we only have two minutes for 65 pages of those types of questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, the recommended action is to approve the department's report and accept the donations. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? It passes 3-0, thank you. Um, the next item on the agenda is the department's report relative to the expects, excuse me, expense statement of the chief of police. Uh, for attending the 2019 Major Cities Chiefs Association. Um, colleagues, I will uh, represent to you that um, I, I did notice that the underlying expenses were not provided to us, and so I did request them, and the underlying expenses include the registration fee, uh, the uh, five nights at a, the hotel uh, during the conference, and airfare to and from Los Angeles. And uh, that is the sum total of the expenses to be reimbursed. Are there questions? No question. Uh, Mr. Bonner, questions? I don't have a question. I'm satisfied with the clarification. I would just, um, you know, underscore or request that, in particular, when there's a reference to an attachment in the in the agenda, that we make sure that the underlying documents are in fact included. I mean, this one was a fairly manageable uh, item to. Uh, understand, but in the future, if we just be a little more attentive, that'd be appreciated. And I uh, and that would go to a request to commission staff who had the materials. Is there public comment cards on item B? Yes, we have one, Mr. Herman. Mr. Herman. Look at here. Government Code 6264 regarding five nights for expenses. Well, I'm going to be less troubling for you to warn you of the health and safety code involved in this. 7052 for the record. Do you know what that site means? Let me remind you. Claim number 20-02783B. PC number 1903. Sir, you are not on topic. I'm reading the, the BPC number into the record, Madam Chair. Please be respectful. 0317. Approve the Department's report recommendation for the board action. I don't see any recommendation. Other than we, the public, Major City Chiefs Association, the acronym MCCA, not the YMCA, but the MCA, follow the meeting of the International Chiefs of Police. Well, you know what? Chief Dean Milliken from DPD is a very excellent man. A true example of why we have conferences to exposition in Chicago the high-ranking city of criminals and corruption. 
However, I cannot see why we only spend $3,278 in change. I believe Michael Moore deserves $6,000, and $14 in change. Because that's what it takes to get bitches in those nice goddamn the recommended uh, request for board action is to approve the department's report. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? No opposition. Passes 3-0. The next item on the agenda is the grant application uh, for the Port Security Grant Program. Is there someone from the department here prepared to come forward and speak to this item? And what I'd ask, sir, is for you to uh, identify yourself by name and rank and uh, just give us a brief overview of the purpose of this grant. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Good morning. My name is Captain Craig Valenzuela. I'm the Assistant Commanding Officer at Metropolitan Division. So this, uh, the grant uh, requested, it's a 25% matching, uh, matching. The federal government would uh, provide 75%. Um, the, the funds would be used to purchase two, two large uh, ticket items, the first being a, a handheld sonar device to be used underwater. Um, the new equipment would assist uh, the UDU, the underwater dive unit, and uh, SWAT tactical waterborne um, to locate um, any mission specifics, whether it's people, items, uh, parts of pieces of evidence uh, to, uh, underwater. The second part of it would be an aqua lung mode system, which is a rebreather. Uh, it's a scrubber which allows the divers to use canisters that uh, re recycle the air um, and leave less bubble traces, uh, so our divers are, are less visible um, from from uh, from uh, above water. Thank you, sir. And the 25% match is coming from where? The 25% match would be coming from the police foundation. They have not yet provided the funds. They are aware of them, and are, I believe they're waiting for the approval of this before those funds will then come back and ask the approval of that donation from the police foundation. Thank you, sir. Are there questions from other commissioners? Mr. Bonner? Uh, yeah, it's, this is a, just a broad question. I'm supportive of the grant application, but um, can you remind me, does the LA Port Police still exist? And if they do, can you comment on the jurisdictional um, lines uh, between the, you know, what the port police handle versus the department? Yes, uh, the, yes, the port police still exist, um, and it's very much a partnership. There, obviously, there they have uh, there are some federal laws that they are more suited to uh, to enforce and uh, partnership with in terms of uh, homeland security along at the port. Um, but very much what we do is um, act in concert and along with them um, rather than trying to you know, step on their toes or, or take over things that they're doing. So we're there as a support element with, with, the, 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 uh, with the port police. But what I'm not, still not clear on is, um, so it's not as easy as they're enforcing laws within the port complex and you're on the perimeter or vice versa or anything along those lines, is it? Uh, well, a lot of this stuff is not just solely for the port. There are other, you know, bodies of water, whether it's MacArthur Park, the lakes, you know, smaller places that, that do, so this isn't solely just port. Uh, the, these items specifically would likely be held solely at the port, but uh, what we're doing is not just at the port, but in large measure at the port, but yes. Got it, thank you. No further questions? Um, are there public comment cards on this item? We have two, Mr. Herman and Wayne from Encino. Mr. Herman, sir. Sir, you need to address the acceptance of a grant from the Department of Homeland Security. Okay, well, let me start off on the record. Homeland Security at 213-330-9803 for the record. Mr. Kenny Hong, thank you. Now let me continue. So, 
As you heard in the report dated November 20th, held there today for the record is December 10th. That specific number is a relative good number for me, because back in the days when I was born, on the 10th day of every month. Sir, you need to address the grant application. I'm getting the airport security grant. That's where we're at now. And you know already the mayor, the absentee mayor of Los Angeles and his fucking city council have nothing to do with this transmit department report. Where are they? I just saw her Western looking for Sir, you need to address the stuff. acceptance of a grant application from the Department of Homeland Security. If you don't have anything to say regarding item. Yes, sir, the grant application. called the grant application award for the Department of Homeland Security. So, you know, I'm not fucking dumb as you look. According to my therapist, I suffer from a disability. Again, sir, if you have something to say on the acceptance of the grant application, we're here with you. But if you don't, then please sit down. Thank you, sir. Alan Decker. Sorry, I didn't mean Mr. I didn't mean man. And you, Mr. Smith. Thank you, uh, Mr. Spindler. <laughs> Mr. Herman, your time's up, sir. Ma'am, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my papers for you guys real quick. We have our next, you're, you're holding up the meeting, oh, Mr. Sorry, Herman. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There you go, ma'am. Thank you. Public documents for the record. Thank you. What the hell? Nigga just serving parking ticket and paperwork, man. Is it got this port security grant program? I don't know. I kind of have a problem with these new signs at the airport. I, I drew one. I, I don't have a phone. I can't take a photo, but I went Sir, and I took Sir, you're not a, addressing the port yeah, security Yeah, I, I took a grant. drawing of it, though. That's kind of what it looked like at the airport, so... I don't know. 2019 Port Security Grant Program for some fucking bullshit involving airport nature type things and an award. An award for what? Every time I go through the airport, I get searched. This is regarding the port. Every time Los Angeles, not I the go airport, down, sir. right? Now, every time I go down to the park, I bring my boat. I do have a boat. Now, when I bring my boat down, they say, you can't park your boat in the Terminal 1. And I go down and park my Sir, boat in a slip. Sir, this is regarding the acceptance of a grant application, not your experience at the port. If you have anything to it say regarding the grant application, It is bona fide loot so. day about your experience experience at the motherfucking part involving security. Now, I can't get into that part without calling Janice Hahn at 213-974-4444. simply not addressing the acceptance of a grant. That's what I mean. You limiting people going down to the part that are campaign donators and filthy fucking Jews and dirty fucking... Sir, your time is up. Um, the recommended board action is to approve the department's report and transmit it concurrently to the mayor and city council. Is there a motion to that effect? I will move it forward. Is there a second? Second. Is there uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, no opposition. It passes 3-0. Uh, the next matter on our agenda, on the regular agenda, is item D, the department's report uh, relative to an audit. Can the team related to that come forward, please, and introduce yourselves and give us a brief overview of this matter. Thank you. Yes, good morning, everyone. My name is Jeffrey Phillips. I'm commanding officer of Audit Division, and with me is Detective Jose Seja. He's a Assistant Officer in Charge for Audit Section C. Mike McCunis, Assistant Director of Office of Operations. Good morning. Commissioners, before you have the handling of mentally ill audit report, Audit Division reviewed a statistically valid sample of 61 police contacts with persons suffering from mental illness. There were three audit objectives. 
Object number one, tested the disposition codes of mentally ill service calls. And although the department was at 84% compliance, the new P1 communication aided dispatch system may resolve some of the issues identified. And I'm sure that Commander Rampunas will provide some insight on how that uh, is being addressed. Objective number two, tested the documentation of contacting the mental evaluation unit. Now herein we had nine of the calls that did not document the contacts to MEU as per the requirement of the Office of Operations notice dated October 30th, 2017. However, upon further review, we identified that for six of the nine, we saw that the MEU incident tracking system did show those officers contact MEU. So again, they didn't con the officers didn't uh, document it on their end in the CAD system, but they did make the call. For objective number three, this was a performance assessment, and we wanted to, uh, to evaluate how the availability of the MEU uh, for officers out in the field and how that was working out, and whether it was MEU officers uh, responding out to the field or taking the calls via telephone. And by and large, MEU makes itself available to the field officers, provided the limitations in staffing compared to the demand of calls at certain points in time. 93% of the time within our sample, we saw contact between the field officers and MEU staff. Uh, we have no recommendations, and that concludes my summary. Commander, did you want to add anything? Yes, ma'am. So just to add, um, it, as Audit Division was conducting their audit, the Office of Operations was additionally conducting one an, an audit in the same area, and we quickly, quickly realized that the uh, issue of officers um, putting um, differing disposition codes was a problem so in march on march 29 2019 the office streamlined the process and mandated that there were going to be four disposition codes that were going to be utilized for um, um, a dispo of of officers um, handling a call that involved some type of mental illness so that was passed out to the officers additionally with the new p1 cad system it is simplified and is uh when officers handle a call involving mental illness, there's only four or six ways that they can dis dispo a call, which means correctly ha um, handle the call, then dispo it accordingly to be in compliance um, with the policy. And um, they can only dispo the call using one of the six ways that the call could be disposed. So that instead of having 43 different options, there's six that now have been identified. And to further make it more user friendly is, um, the dispo calls used to be in acronyms, which can cause a problem, A-R-M, A-R-N, H-O-M. So that can cause a, pro cause a problem. Now it is spelled out. So you have an arrest for mental illness. So an officer actually has to read the correct disposition code and enter it um, appropriately. So we believe that in itself will also um, help, help this process along. Thank you. Um, I do have a few questions. I'm not sure if other commissioners do. You answered mine, so go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, mine are very brief, I think, um, if you don't mind. Um, some are procedural as to the audit, and then some are more um, operational. So first on the procedural, um, I noticed the time period for this particular audit was longer than some of the preceding audits that you mentioned. Um, in this audit, it was, um, I think, from September 1st, 2018 to the end of February 2019. And in the prior audits, they were uh, roughly uh, 30 days. Is there a particular reason for that, um, that difference? Yes, at some point in time, there is a uh, very strategic decision that we should be expanding our scope of audit anywhere between six months to, to a year. Excuse me, um, Mr. Herman, I believe that was you. Please stop calling out during the meetings, sir. So again, it was, it was a decision, it was my decision that we should be uh, extending our, our scope of audit uh, from six months, uh, between six months and a year, and not doing it just within a 30-day period. Okay. Um, and I also noticed that on the DISPO codes, over the three-year period from 2015, <clears throat> excuse me, the three audits starting in 2015, 2018, 2019, um, the percentage of compliance uh, changed dramatically. Is, is that due to the increase in the number of the codes uh, that perhaps created the, uh, some confusion? Um, because it's very unusual, at least uh, in the just over a year that I've been here, to see after audits uh, the percentage go down as opposed to go up. And I'm wondering if you can explain that. I think it might, some of it might have to do with uh, 
the attention that is given to the topic area and Office of Operations providing training. And so it's fresh in officers' minds. They, they tend to pay more attention to it. And as time goes, then you know, there's uh, the, the, the attention kind of <laughs> goes away, so but to speak. Were you measuring the same thing? Was it the same number of yes, disposition it, codes? It, it was measuring the same thing? Yes, what we were measuring has been the same throughout. Okay. Yes. So Commissioner, if I can just add, after 2000 or into 2014, the department made a concerted effort to train all officers in, 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 in MHIT, which is the mental health training. So that was a big push from into, four, into 2014 where it became a priority to get all officers trained and part of the training was in regards to handling calls, disposition of calls. So therefore, you can see the increase in 2015, um, a, a, a dramatic increase actually from the way that uh, the calls were being disposed and handled accordingly. Okay, and um, and then uh, I think you answered most of my questions on the new CAD system and uh, the benefits that will will offer. Because as I read this particular audit. It's uh, more about uh, compliance with administrative detail, which of course is very important, uh, but it does seem that automation can solve a lot of these particular problems identified in the audit. And is it your sense, Commander, that most, if not all of these issues will be addressed by the new CAD system and the automation it provides? Absolutely, because there's only six different ways you can dispel a call, so off so officers won't even be allowed to 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 make a mistake per se when handling a call with mental illness. So, uh, we believe that'll be corrected, and we're actually going to audit that in the first quarter of uh, 20 okay. to, to verify. Thank you, sir. Um, did you have questions, sir? Uh, yes, just a couple. Um, just following on that on that theme, I'll jump to the. Um, the, find, the table six on page six where there's the nine instances where they uh, did not document contact with MEU. Is that also, done, what, one, like what do we know about um, why that was in those cases, uh, but also more importantly, is it something that we expect to be also uh, corrected with uh, the new CAD system or so we've actually made it in in March of 20 uh, March of 2019 now officers are only required to they still have to call and contact MEU but they're getting an incident number now so of the nine, six were actually logged in at MEU in their database, and there were three where we didn't find any documentation. So, uh, but the, but the individual was hospitalized as required. So it, it's I'm going to say it's an oversight on the officers uh, per se where we couldn't find any documentation. Um, um, on those specific or on those three specific cases, but now calling MEU, getting an incident number, and then putting that incident number in the um, the uh, the incident history of the uh, prior to dispoing um, is still part of the process. But the secondary check is still with the M with the mental health uh, or MEU's database to cross check to make sure that they are making contact because that's a shell on any mental illness radio call as you shall call. Um, MEU, so we believe that um, the percentages will will increase with the the, the new system and the uh, information that was put out in March of nineteen. You mean the percentage of compliance? The percentage of compliance, right? Um, all right. Then just stepping back more broadly, I had a question. There's the the audit uh, notes the the prior reviews in two thousand fifteen and two thousand eighteen. And uh, there was some variation, and they looked at some slightly different things. What? So, just, can you comment just really what determines the audit audit objectives from year to year? It's usually done during the brain. Free, <laughs> sir, please do not disrupt this meeting. You're welcome to join us, but if you, sir, 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 if you continue to disrupt the meeting, we'll have to ask you to leave. Yes, sir. Please have a seat. Sir, can you answer the question? Yes, that's uh, determined during our brainstorm meetings at the very onset of the audit when it's assigned to the project managers. We go through the, the previous audits or, um, that have been conducted and we make a determination as to what it is we want to focus on. And so previously we looked at the use of force training involving uh, when uh, it was involved folks with mental illness and that was at 100%, so you know, we eliminated looking at that. Um, and so it, it's, it's a determination at the very onset of the audit. Understood. Thank you. Uh, are there public comment cards on this item? We have seven. The first three, Mr. Herman, Adam Smith, and Wayne from Encino.
honorable gentleman is free. And so am I. I'm free from excuse. And that excuse is the definition of a disability. The ADA protects qualified persons with a disability under the definition of disability. Under the ADA includes both physical and mental impairments that substantially limit one or more major life activities as work, work, work. And the record such of impairments is documented here in my hand, a record, a condition, a physical and mental condition based on doctor's psychological evaluations for a number of years because you motherfuckers discriminate against me. In addition to that, in my four page to Mark F. P. Smith regarding state law, code 12940 under FEHA, disability of Armando Herman. Sir, regarding you're not addressing the audit that's before us. I'm which is talking about, about disabilities, lady. That is not the matter before Listen us. Listen here, God the damn matter it. Is Under the audit, audit form 18.47.00, 100% training. I'm going to address the audit, sir. Then I'll I'm have dealing to with the audit in my hand, ma'am. 92% use of force against people with mental disabilities. Liz Elizabeth, L I Z B E T H R O D E S, is a part of the audit. Am I right or wrong? 213-486-8730. So the conditions of your audit reflects bad government's interest in the people you're supposed to protect and serve. I ain't the dumb nigga groping a 27-year-old woman who's dead just because I want to get a hard on. Mr. Smith. For the record here, Mr. sir. Mr. Smith and then Mr. Spindler. For Mr. Smith. Mr. Mr. Smith. For the record. Thank you. Yeah, I think that um, these audits and reports regarding the LAPD response to community members experiencing mental health issues serve solely to legitimize and normalize the idea that LAPD should be the first responders to folks that need health care, not an armed response. Um, none of these audits and reports will ever talk about the mental health issues created and exacerbated in the black, brown, and poor communities by the, pre by the presence of an ever-growing LAPD occupying parks, schools, public housing units. Um, as the supposed voice of the community up there, civilian oversight, it's, you know, to me it's incredibly disingenuous that those questions aren't asked by this board. Instead, you know, you say that, yes, this audit proves this or doesn't prove this, but you don't think about, you don't ask why, you know, last week you give 200 million more to the, to the LAPD. You don't ask why people with guns are showing up as the first responders to people experiencing mental health. You don't ask why, you know, these nooses that, Chief Moore showed off yesterday in that video. You're totally okay with folks experiencing mental illness to get tied up by LAPD officers with a weapon. Why not ask how LAPD can get away from these circumstances? How can we put more public health care as first response to these issues? Not, are they doing it right? Are they reporting it right? Are they using the right acronyms when they do their comp stat meetings or whatever? It's disingenuous, and y'all are failing. Yeah, so anyway, the title page of the report is here. So, acronyms. FC for the chairwoman stands for Fucking cunt. And that's what this report is. 
written by fucking cunts, decided by fucking cunts, and implemented. Break the quorum by if you don't get, cunts. You don't get on topic and stop your despicable you are language. Dis you, pig. you are disrupting the meeting, non-chair. Mr. Spindler, make your comments uh, directly. Go ahead. To the Run audit. away, Mr. coward. Mr. Spindler. Run away on the day Mr. of freedom. Spindler, Run away, chicken butt. On the audit. Buck, buck, buck. All right, we no longer have a quorum, Mr. Spindler. The commission will go into recess. We no longer have a, a quorum, Mr. Spindler. Your comments were not directed to the audit. The chickens have come home to roost. That's right. Mr. That's Spindler, right. Because now, now you meeting. know that your Thank fake you, criminal charges this morning were now done with. Just like my fake criminal charges. Oh, the chicken has returned home sir, to roost. Sir, your comments are to be directed to the audience. That's sir. what? But you That's got to read. Do I have a motion to sir, reconvene the meeting? Sir. That's right. Address your comments to the audience. Interrupting you have yet me. In any of the time that you have had me. addressed anything related to the audit. I am. You won't let me speak a word. That's not the Brown Act, lady. Is it, Mr. City Attorney? It's not the Brown Act. She's You're still taking not my addressing time. the topic, which is the audit. May I have my time us. back that you ripped off from me? You while, know, actually, while the you Jew not, left sir, the room and the Jew returned back sir, to persecute you're now all excused, of us. Mr. Spindler, you're excused from this meeting. Oh, no, mommy. I didn't get you're a warning, Mr. City meeting. Attorney. Actually, you did. I did earlier. not get a warning. And it's on the record. You're and excused technically, ma'am, the Take your swastika and get out of here, you the, jerk. The, 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 Mr. The guy, Spindler, oh, you mean you're this? That's, that's you. Meeting. That's not well, me. Sirs, please excuse I didn't do Mr. that. Spindler from today's meeting. I didn't Thank make you. that. You made that. You're still disrupting this you meeting, Mr. Spindler. You did it to my family back in Germany in the 1920s. You when continue you to disrupt the this meeting, banking system Mr. The Spindler. Republic. You're That's interfering with the progress of this meeting, this country. Did you know Mr. That? Spindler. You Mr. People. Spindler. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Spindler. The meeting will not continue the until you leave. You Next, we have Jamie Garcia. Mr. Spindler, you're excused from today's meeting, sir. We continue to wait for you to leave the today's meeting. Who's after Ms. Garcia, by the way? Akil Gopal and Paula Minor. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. It was Ms. Garcia, then who? Akil Gopal, Paula Minor. Ms. Garcia. Um, so it's been a minute since I've been here and um, I find uh, these audits that are procedural audits to be really uh, a waste of time because we're not really looking at the impact of the intervention. And I, I speak to that because, you know, being at White Memorial, it's, we're well aware that Hollenbeck trains our um, security um, at White Memorial. And, um, and knowing that and knowing how... Um, you know, even like hospital facilities are trained to intervene with mental health crisis. It's a shame to know that we don't have the necessary resources to actually do it effectively because I can only imagine how officers probably enter into a space where someone's having a mental health crisis where you have an, a gun, you have a, you know, baton, you have a, a taser, and you probably come in with rubber gloves on and you probably come in very aggressively. And so when we think about what actually needs to be audited and what actually needs to be looked at when we think about interventions. It's not if they checked the box right, if they called the right person, if the dispatch sent them where they needed to send. It's actually if the intervention is, is successful. And so we know in the past that we've already seen that officer-involved shootings um, are occurring to people with mental, um, mental health conditions. Um, even one of the names that we raised during the press conference today was a young man who had called the police because he was um, having a mental health crisis. The police showed up and killed him. 
So, so these are the things that we need to think about, and these are the things that the commission should be instructing the OIG or should be figuring out some kind of way to actually realize, is it actually working? Right? Is this type of intervention actually working? Because the call from the community is really that we want to shift all this resources into people who are medically trained. So I, as a nurse, have better, better skills and tactics to intervene with someone having a mental health crisis than someone with a gun, a taser, or a baton. Thank you, ma'am. Another example about how this, um, this audit was entirely useless and symbolic is that a key part of the way that the mental evaluation unit does a lot of damage in LA communities was not mentioned or looked at, which is the LAPD PATH program. That stands for Providing Alternatives to Hinder Extremism, which is a partnership between the police, the mental evaluation unit, the Joint Terrorism Task Force, and local Homeland Security fusion centers. And my question for you is, in all of this um, obscure detail about how many times uh, a department was contacted and, and how many uh, acronyms were used, how many times were people quote unquote intervened with and what, what, what did that mean when the actual program, which has such a innocuous name, is actually a remaking of a program called Recognizing uh, extremist network early warnings. So this is a program that's intrinsically based on the Islamophobic war on terror narrative and it's being used now to target people who are uh, supposedly at risk of committing violence but we have no idea because the program is so secretive. So where's the audit of the LAPD PATH program? Where the, uh, where's the data on how many people have been impacted? And also, what has happened with the data who have been referred to as extremists without any semblance of maybe themselves not even realizing that that label has been, um, uh, that that label has been attached to them and that their data is now sitting in Homeland Security fusion centers? So I urge the Inspector General to do a full audit of the mental health evaluation unit that incor incorporates all of the harm it's done to communities. Ms. Minor, and who's after Ms. Minor? We have Michael Novick, and then we have one additional card that was submitted. Late cards will go at uh, general public comment. Okay. Ms. Minor. Um, my immediate response to just the title of this particular audit, handling of the mentally ill, um, it shows the space that LAPD is in when they are dealing with mentally ill. You know, the words associated with mentally ill need to be referral, need to be treatment, need to be service. But we're talking about how our now first responders for mental illness are police, and it should not be police because all they want to do is handle, categorize, and report their particular contacts. Um, our LAPD carries the image of violence, not just to the general public, but especially to people having a mental illness crisis. When they see the gun, the taser, as previously submitted, they, they are afraid. The seriousness of having LAPD as a first responder for the mentally ill is just... Um, it's hard to even discuss. It's hard for us to sit here and talk about the numbers when we see the crisis, especially in the black community and the homeless community. And I do want to point out that this handling has resulted in many cases in very traumatic and deadly actions. We remember the names of Ezel Ford, Riddell Jones, Waukesha Wilson, and especially Grishario Mack, who were all having mental illness, crisis, at the time of their contact with LAPD. And where are those people now? Dead. Where their names reverberate in our community over and over again, a symbol of having LAPD confront the mentally ill first. So as we are here, we're calling for the firing of Grishario Max murders when they came to handle his mental illness. And I'm going to ask that we raise Grishario Max's name again and again until there is some accountability. Thank Say you, his Say name. His name. Say his name. Mr. Novick. 
Mr. Novick is next, sir. Mr. Novick is behind you. He's next. And I don't believe you put in a card, sir, but Mr. Novick, yours. His card was the late card. Uh, sir, your card is late. You no can wait, speak no during wait, general no public no, 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 comments, no, 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 sir. No, wait, no, wait, no, no. Sir, I'm the, the red chief. Fund. Sir, I No, I'm you haven't you been listening to sir, me. I, I gave am you plenty listening. of opportunity. Sir, I will sue order, your sir. motherfucking ass. Sir, your name has not no, been called. No, I'm the red chief, hun. I come down here to talk to people. Okay, sir. No, we're gonna, you're not we're gonna going to do it because if it was the kiosk card, it would be done. Down, sir. Wait, sir, if it was a kiosk down. card, it would sir, be done. Sir, if I was signing up on a kiosk, well. I, 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 I wouldn't be discriminated because the color of my skin. I'm, I, hey, I've been discriminated because you don't want to hear from me. You can't call me back. I'm black, huh? You's a racist bitch. Get out of my goddamn city council. Number 4A1 and 4A2 in accordance with government code 54957. <laughs> Number 4A1 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. In closed session, item number 4A2 was discussed and the Chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. Madam President. Thank you very much. Um, we uh, are back in session. We were unable to proceed earlier due to disruption, but we'll now continue with the agenda. And where we were, we were on item uh, 1D. We were on public comment. And Mr. Novick, you were up, sir. Mike is not on, there it is. You had public comment on the closed session items that you had to listen to before you went into closed session and you didn't. So you better take it and then redo whatever you did in closed sir, session. you're on item 1D right yes, now. Yes, 1B. 1D, uh, yes. The audit of uh, uh, your mental health procedures. The idea that you would audit training to use uh, force with people having mental health crises is ridiculous. You don't want to use force with people having mental health crises. The, People in mental health, uh, having mental health issues, are uh, the largest disproportionate share of people being killed by law enforcement all around the country and here in LA as, LA as well. You need to reject this proposal and uh, report and demand that uh, if 911 does not direct mental health calls to uh, mental health professionals and not the LAPD, that when the LAPD arrives, they immediately call for mental health professionals to the scene if it uh, determines that someone is having a mental health crisis. The use of force against people 
uh, suffering from mental health issues is completely inappropriate and no amount of auditing the training uh, to use force with it uh, is valid or acceptable. So uh, you need to uh, not approve this department report and you need to direct the department to change its procedures immediately and you need to change the budget of the police department so that money is available for a sufficient number of mental health professionals to deal with mental health crises that people are facing in the city because of the conditions that the LAPD upholds and enforces. So I think that uh, uh, you're uh, constantly derelict in your duties. I don't know why you staged the walkout today to change the agenda because uh, you had allowed people to abuse you for minutes and then took the excuse that uh, Chief Red Hunt, uh, Red Chief Hunt didn't want to uh, uh, step away from the podium to Thank adjourn you, your meeting. The recommend Recommended board action is to approve the department's report. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? It passes 3-0. We move on to the report of the chief of police. Chief. Good morning, commissioners. I'm going to talk about uh, two officer-involved shootings that were both involving <coughs> no hits and a item, an incident known as a tactical un un unintended discharge. And I'll explain more about that uh, when I get to that. But on, in Hollenbeck area on the 29th of November at approximately 7.10 at night, uh, Hollenbeck gang uniform officers were in the area of Malabar and Fickett, and they observed a known gang member who was on formal probation for narcotic violations. That individual was later identified as Nathan Alexander Tovar, male Hispanic, 21 years of age. Officers attempted to detain Mr. Tovar, and the suspect produced a handgun and fired at the officers. The officers one officer returned fire. Uh, however, the, uh, Mr. Tovar was not struck. Uh, that officer who returned fire was, however, struck by Mr. Tovar's gunfire in the left arm. Uh, Mr. Tovar was arrested at scene and, and charged with attempt murder on a police officer. A loaded 9mm handgun was recovered at scene, and the officer was transported and treated for that gunshot wound to his left arm at a local hospital. I'm, uh, I'm thankful to report that uh, the gunshot wound uh, injury will, he will survive it and will recover a full expect, and we expect a full recovery. Force Investigation Division responded to the location and is handling the administrative portion. Robbie Homicide Division responded and is handling the uh, crime and arrests of Mr. Tovar. In addition, uh, the um, district attorney's uh, rollout team, officer involved shooting rollout team was there as well as the inspector general. On the, uh, later on December 1st at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning in Newton Division, uh, again we had a, a second officer involved shooting with no hits in the area of the 700 block of Crocker Ab uh, Street. On that date, uh, Newton patrol officers responded to a radio call with a man with a gun in the area being reported in the area of 7th and San Pedro. Uh, the individual was described as a male black wearing blue jeans and a backpack and was reportedly pointing a revolver at passerbyers. As the officers arrived on scene, they observed the individual later identified as Lonya Marquise Calloway, a male black 20 years of age. He was observed on the corner of 7th and San Pedro. Upon seeing the officers, uh, Mr. Calloway ran from the officers uh, with the officers giving chase. Uh, the foot pursuit ensued and backup units also in the area followed. Uh, after running several hundred feet, Mr. Calloway uh, changed his direction and ran back towards the officers who were conducting the foot pursuit, resulting in officer involved shooting. The suspect was Mr. To uh, Calloway was not struck by the gunfire and immediately surrendered. He was taken in custody without further incident. Uh, his 38 caliber or a 38 caliber revolver was recovered at scene. Mr. Calloway was booked for assault with a deadly weapon on a police officer. Force Investigation Division criminal apprehension team will be handling that criminal uh, prosecution as well as force investigation will handle the administrative investigation. Uh, fortunately, both officers, uh, no officers were injured during this. And uh, again, the um, Office of Inspector General responded to this. The district attorney's rollout team did not respond in this instance. Uh, the uh, last issue of a, of a, of a categorical uh, is a tactical unintended discharge. And a tactical un unintended discharge is when a police officer involved in, in a stop or some type of action um, unintentionally discharge their firearm, uh, not pointing or directing his action or her action towards a particular suspect's action, but uh, another, another phrasing is also known as an accidental discharge. 
And such an event occurred on December 2nd, uh, just before 2 p.m. In, on the Roscoe Shirley Avenue uh, intersection in the Devonshire area. On that date, plainclothes members of the Gang Narcotics Division Federal Bureau of Investigation Task Force located a suspect who was wanted for homicide. Uh, those detectives requested a uniform patrol unit to conduct a high-risk stop on the suspect who was a passenger in a BMW vehicle driving in the area of Roscoe Boulevard and Tampa Avenue. Uniform officers uh, from Topanga and West Valley responded and a short vehicle pursuit ensued. The driver of the BMW stopped the vehicle on uh, Roscoe Boulevard at Shirley and as officers exited their vehicle and was giving commands to the occupants of the BMW, one of the officers had an unintended discharge of his pistol. The officer's unintended discharge uh, was one round. Uh, no one was struck or injured. Uh, the driver and passengers were all taken into custody without further incident and Force Investigation Division responded and will be handling the uh, criminal investigation. Uh, the arrestees on this involved a Ravian Fuente, female Hispanic, 23 years of age. Uh, she was booked on a parole violation and a Michael Magdag Magdaglio, a male Hispanic, uh, approximately uh, 29 years of age and he was booked for a felony on a vehicle pursuit. Uh, this last couple of weeks uh, have been, been a busy time for us. I want to thank uh, Commission President uh, Decker as well as Commissioner Senator Fierro Villa for attending with us on our 150th uh, anniversary, our culminating event uh, held at the historic Highland Park uh, facility, also known as our police museum. Uh, it was an outstanding day of, uh, of activity and I again, I appreciate uh, the leadership of the commission being there recognizing the uh, the event and uh, and again it gave our officers an opportunity to be to be reflective of our past but also uh, excited for a future as we move forward policing this city. We also had have, have had a number of uh, of events that I've attended uh, as our community outreach our engagement uh, given this time of year, uh, the LA Mission uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, 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 Lunch was, uh, I participated in that as we did the 16th annual Motor for Toys uh, charity drive in Woodland Hills uh, and a toy drive this past Sunday in, at the Sherman Oaks Homeowner Association uh, in Van Nuys. Uh, lastly, we had a reserve, uh, uh, Valley Bureau hosted a reserve training day uh, on, on Saturday in the San Francisco Valley, which I want to compliment Valley Bureau for taking the lead and providing our reserve officers with necessary training and updates on, a, uh, on, the, on their various trade craft of being a reserve. Being a reserve officer with LAPD is, uh, requires a great deal of investment in time and energy to stay proficient in the various skill sets and responsibilities. And I, again, I congratulate Valley Bureau for holding that, uh, that training day. Uh, lastly, uh, I, I was able to attend and see the swearing in of LA Unified School District Police Chief Todd Chamberlain, uh, a name that's familiar to this uh, commission. Uh, commander, uh, former Commander uh, Todd Chamberlain was our homeless coordin homelessness coordinator uh, prior to his retirement and now with his appointment as LA Unified School District Police uh, Chief, I look forward to our continued uh, great relationship with LA Unified School District Police as they go about the uh, critical work of ensuring the safety of, uh, of everyone attending LA Unified School uh, campuses. Uh, as to our uh, weekly report on crime, uh, our uh, crime reduction for the year continues to improve uh, with now we have a 1.6% a, um, a reduction in homicides with 239 homicides for 243 for the year. We are just over 1,000 fewer violent crimes this year than last. That is a 3.9% reduction from last year uh, and it's a, more than a 6% reduction over a two-year period. We have reductions in every property crime category with an overall 8% reduction. That's 7,557 fewer property crimes in the city of Los Angeles and more than an 8% reduction for a two year period. Overall, part one crime in Los Angeles now stands at a 7% uh, reduction uh, versus a, uh, which is um, 8,600 fewer part one crimes this year versus last. We also have seen uh, success in gaining momentum on a reduction of victims shot with 59 fewer uh, individuals shot this year compared to last year at this time. That is a 6.2% reduction. And I'm proud to say that also over a two year period, that's, that's more than a 9% reduction from one year over the next. Um, um, 
a, a group of that uh, success in our shooting violence reduction, as well as a, an overall part one crime reduction, is a reduction in, in total gang crime. We now stand at a 4.2% reduction in reported uh, gang-related crime. That's 160 fewer instances uh, this year versus last. As I do each week, I'm going to uh, report on in-custody deaths this year versus last. We are at three in-custody deaths versus seven last year. This board's actions today uh, affirming that the, for the reclassification of an uh, earlier um, in-custody death investigation to an accidental is the uh, is the reason for that, uh, for those numbers today. That is a 57% reduction from last year, and on a four-year average, it's a 43% reduction. On officer-involved shootings, uh, as I reported yesterday to the media, uh, we have now had a total of 26 officer-involved shootings this year to date. That number was 31 last year. The number of fatal fatalities this year is 12. That number last year is 11. As we move to our traffic safety, uh, our traffic collisions overall for the city is we've, we're experiencing a 1.5% reduction. However, the challenge that we have continues in our motor vehicle versus PEDS, serious injuries and deaths. Uh, serious injury and death collisions in Los Angeles are up 1.8% and the entire increase can be seen in our motor vehicle versus pedestrian uh, serious injuries and deaths. So the criticality of this area of our work uh, of, of awareness, of education, of engineering changes uh, continues. Lastly, in regards to personnel, we have uh, 10,031 uh, total sworn members of the organization, 2,962 civilian employees, 390 reserve officers, 1,724 uh, cadets, and that concludes my remarks. Happy for any comments or questions. Thank you. Uh, one moment, I need to consult with the city attorney on something. Um, are there questions from commissioners of the chief? No. no. Okay, we, uh, because there are only three of us today, when one has to step out, we lose the quorum. We're gonna take a two minute recess. It will be two minutes. We'll be right back. Apologies to everyone. And what's absolutely atrocious and, and almost laughable, and there was an exchange just now between uh, Jamie Garcia and Michael Moore as well, is again, I mean, that, that glaringly displays the complete, complete uh, insensitivity and a complete uh, dehumanization of the communities. Because one of the things that we were trying to see that is there any chance that whether there would be any element of accountability of what happened as a result. Of course, the issue around communication, how it gets communicated. Of course, the issue around signing a contract with JSS, even after the, the dismantlement of LASER and having a fresh new contract with the very consultant that is at the heart, that is at the heart of this absolutely discredited program and signing that, that is absolutely insidious. And then looking at Palantir as well, that how Palantir continues and how the department speaks from both sides of its mouth, that on one hand it's about protection of immigrant communities and at the heart of massive deportation is the data processing that Palantir has been doing. So this clearly, this department, this is all a lot of bullshit about protecting the immigrant communities. But I think the key here is the accountability of those officers, those commanders. Those commanders that, as per Mark Smith's own audit, own audit, were telling field officers to create a reasonable suspicion standard.
Those commanders that were telling the officers to put people in chronic offender data list with zero points as Mark Smith's audit had identified as well. And even if like what we have to say, because you really don't care what the community raises, but even your own inspector general highlighting these glaring dispar discrepancies and violation of people's human rights and civil rights. Thank you, sir. And still there is nothing, nothing that, that this man Thank as you, the head sir. of the department is doing or will do. So we just wanted to expose that. Thank you. Mr. Novick. Uh, yeah, I want to point out that uh, uh, after many weeks this year in which uh, uh, Chief Moore kept talking about the fact that uh, uh, there were fewer fatalities uh, this year than previously, we now have more fatalities this year at the hands of the police than last year. And uh, I want to say I find it personally offensive that he uses the language male black. Black is not a noun. And to refer to someone as a black is abusive and racist language. You could say a black male or a black man, and using black as an adjective to describe their ethnicity or race. To say a male black, I think, is really abusive, and you need to change your language, and you need to change your practice, and you need to stop killing black people and shooting at black people in the city. Um, the other thing I want to point out is that uh, the chief uh, never includes uh, officer involved, I'm so, sorry, uh, deaths in custody. When he talks about how many people have died at the hands of the police and you just had another of, uh, death in custody this week to deal with, uh, you refused to take public comment about it that was submitted before you went into private session. I, I challenge you to go back into uh, private session after this and, and redeal with it again after you hear the public comments on it. I think that you need to insist that the uh, department uh, incorporate uh, deaths in custody into the list of people who died uh, at the hands of the police and, in, and, and uh, at, the, uh, at the responsibility of the LA Police Department. And you need to demand that the chief include that in his reports to you on a weekly basis if you had another death in custody you're dealing with. Uh, and uh, generally speaking, you're a year behind on those cases. So we need to know what's happening now uh, when it happens, not a year later when you uh, take it up to uh, consider what to do about it a year after the fact. Who are the next two speakers, please? Uh, we have Adam Smith and Audrey George. Um, Chief Moore, when you were just talking to Jamie Garcia in the audience, you said that you just disagree. Um, I mean, obviously, you're the chief of police of the most violent police force in the country. Um, but the point, one of the many points that the Stop LAPD Spying Coalition is making is that the list of chronic offenders that was released as part of this um, lawsuit, 679 people, it's only from the database that was started in 2017. Um, an Operation Laser began in 2011, um, or a Chronic Offender Bulletin started in 2011, and Laser. Um, so we know that there's hundreds of more people that are on these lists, and you know, for you to be so dismissive about really looking at what account true accountability looks like for these programs that have had um, deadly impacts in the black community um, in particular. Um, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's a shameful dismissal of, you know, this whole history that, you know, you dismantled the program or the, the program is gone, but that doesn't mean the impact is gone. Um, and I just wonder like what exists today that you are acting on today that um, has been influenced by these programs and like looking at your cowboy stunt yesterday getting wrapped up by the new bola wrap um, Captain Peter Casey said This machine is for somebody who's clearly demonstrating. They're not going to listen to you um, And they're being donated to six stations across the city. So I guess like who picked was that a lottery? Those six stations or is it like where crime exists? Thank you, sir. And Madam Chair, if I might just uh, if I might just respond just briefly, they're actually, uh, Mr. Smith, they're actually going to be at all 21 stations, 
uh, and they are being loaned to us at this point for a four-month evaluation. So each of the stations will have uh, these devices as a means of uh, evaluating their utility, and, and uh, my, it's my hopes that they're going to save lives. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, Ms. George. Ms. George, it's Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, if you'd like to speak to the chief um, after the meeting today. Ms. George, it's your turn, please. So just like the um, so many people were entered onto gang databases, um, self-identifying themselves, it said, in some circumstances when they were only like nine months old. Uh, you have police officers who put people on chronic offender lists who had no points against them, and you don't feel that that is something that needs to be pursued. It's incredible. And don't think, I mean, someday all the names will be available. Someday we will know all of the people. We will know how many have been killed by cops because they were on chronic offender bulletins. We will know how many of them were put in there like in error or arbitrarily. I wanted to, um, I want to, oh, I would I just, uh, the, the video that about you being boloed was, was just so enjoyable, but I wanted to know if you could really candidly say how many outtakes there were before you could have that hit your legs without you losing your balance. Because I've, you know, the force that that comes out with, you know, from that machine um, is very likely to um, unfoot somebody who isn't like standing there very prepared and is likely to bring them, actually bring them down, not just keep them from running and possibly injure them very seriously. So I'm guessing that you had to try a few times like before the video started, you know. Um, I also, you know, wanted to ask you some more, because you, you don't talk about that volunteer program. We'd like to know the status of that. How are you doing recruiting all these volunteers, many of whom are probably on nextdoor.com, spouting racist views left and right? Um, we, I think you owe it to the public to talk about that program and, and how many people you've recruited so far and what your Thank recruiting you, process is. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to public comment. We have four cards, John Avalos, Michael Novick, Hamid Khan, and Adam Smith. What was that, Adam? What was that? <laughs> oh. Hi, everybody. Um, I started coming to the meetings here um, when Wakisha Wilson died in, in, in a jail. And to this day, the 20 minutes of video are still missing, right? There's no accountability for those 20 minutes, right? Is that still the case? <sighs> it's sad. Uh, Chief Moore, Michael Moore, you were talked about, what's the concept you use? A presumed gang member or assumed gang member? What's the concept you used a lot today in your talk? What is it? Assumed gang? That the police identified him as a... No, there was a, a word, assumed gang member or... What is it? Anybody remember? Speak, sir. A presumed gang member. What's the concept you use a lot? Hmm. And they're probably chronic offenders. It certainly looked like whoever this guy was that you were talking about, they, they were just following him around and, and, you know, they knew he was on parole. And this is just my mind thinking, okay? But how can you bring gang violence down? You keep talking about when... All the gang members are gone already. They're all in prison. You just opened up the Wilmington prison. Ooh, Wilmas, ooh, you got all them gang members in jail already. That's why I have a theory as to why Sandra Figueroa Villa, she doesn't even have to talk when she's here. Where are you, Sandra? You should tell the mayor that she's always absent. I have a theory as to why she doesn't have to even talk. In the 90s, when I taught at UCLA, I lived in Echo Park. Man, those gang units were aggressive. I, I stood at the corner of... Oh, I'll continue later. Thank you, Thanks. sir. Mr. Novick. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I think you could avoid the kind of uh, disruption you invited at this meeting today if you had your meetings during the evenings out in the community where a larger cross-section of the community could come and express themselves. You have two or three clowns who show up here and abuse you and abuse us and, uh, you know, use racist, sexist, and vile language. And uh, you allow that to happen. And then uh, when one person... Uh, uh, objects to not having been allowed to speak uh, because they came in late. Uh, you shut the meeting down, I think, for your own purposes. And I think that you're, uh, uh, you don't want public oversight of your operations and you don't provide public oversight of the police operations. I pointed out earlier that you should not have gone into closed session because you had a public comment that was offered to you, requested of you, in relation to the uh, public employee discipline items, the closed session items. So I think that you need to take that. Um, I think you need to move these meetings out of here uh, and you need to hold them in a, a, a situation where people feel comfortable coming and expressing their opinions to you and not that they will be surrounded by police and escorted off the premises. And I think you need to be aware of the fact that you are consistently racist in your handling of people who object and violate to your procedures. You did not have police surround Mr. Spindler at the mic and push him out of the room the way you do when black people do it. You allowed me to speak, although my card went in after the item started, and you denied Red Chief Hunt for the same exact reason. So I think that you need to check yourselves, and then you need to do your job of checking the police department. And if you don't, you need to get the hell out of here and let the people take over the responsibility for actually overseeing what the police do in this city. So again, I urge you to move these meetings out of the police administration building, hold them in the evening when the uh, public can attend. Thank you, sir. Um, I've said repeatedly uh, that meetings will be held in the new year out in the community. Uh, perhaps you missed some of those meetings, Mr. Novick. Mr. Khan, you're next. You haven't said that repeatedly. I have. Um, Mr. Novick, you're next. Mr. Novick, if you want to use your time, now's the time. Otherwise, sir, we'll proceed. Mr. Novick, uh, excuse me, Mr. Khan, your turn, sir. So uh, today is also International Human Rights Day as well, which is being celebrated across the world. And I think today is also the day that uh, a lot of folks around the world just celebrate the cultural resistance, uh, their fight for liberation. But I think it's also a sobering day to, to, to remember that why do we continue to fight? Why do we continue to fight for, for our liberation against racist institutions, against institutional violence, against the national security police state? And we had a press conference this morning that although we won this lawsuit against the LAPD in October, it was groundbreaking because we forced them to release the names from the secret database of the chronic offenders. But we, but we held on because we wanted to, to celebrate this today as a result of that. But I think in going through a lot of this documentation, and I don't know if uh, uh, Dale Bonner, if you've had a chance to, and maybe you know, we, can, we can show you, the amount of damage and the documents that have revealed the amount of criminalization that has happened, you should look at some of these documents. It looks like, it looks like as if you're looking at an MRI of some, some, some disease that is, that, is, that is there. The way whole neighborhoods are being violently targeted, the way communities are being targeted, the way shopping malls are being targeted, the way educational institutions are being targeted, the way individuals are being targeted, it goes on and on and on. And it makes you kind of just pause for a second as well that at what point would this body really take, get serious about its duty and its obligation as representatives of Angelinos to put an end to this thing? Because this has to end. And we're not going anywhere. The coalition is going to keep on fighting it. You know, we have our folks, we have our communities, we have our families. We're not Thank going you, anywhere. We're going to keep on fighting it. But I think at some point, Thank you, some change has to happen, but this has to be taken very seriously. Thank you, sir. Mr. Smith, I believe you're next. Madam President, we have one additional card that was submitted after Adam Smith, Audrey George. Was it late card? It was after public comment started. Okay, then it is late and we will not take it, Mr. Smith. Civilian voice, huh, Ms. Decker? 
Um, so, Chief, what I was getting at is Josh Kane from the Daily News was at your little party yesterday with the bowler rap. Um, and he said in his news story, starting January 1st, six stations across the city will get nine devices each to test over the next four months during a pilot program. The remaining 15 stations will get their own devices on February 1st. And my point was, is how do you choose which stations um, are part of the pilot program? And maybe it's not this, but I think of, you know, the communities that are have the highest crime, the way that you use Metro Division, how they're across four bureaus, but they're only actually used besides like horse pictures in Venice. They're only used in South Central against black people. So where does this data come from to say that these are the six stations that should get your lassos for the pilot program? Um, and truthfully, regardless of what the program is, whether it's Bola Raps or Metro Division, um, it is all based on incredibly problematic data, like stuff that was cold from the laser program and chronic offender bulletins. Um, and without actually you or this civilian oversight board taking a look at that um, and looking at the impact. I don't know. And Miss Decker, you haven't been saying next year that blah, blah, blah. You keep saying you're working towards getting public meetings. The BLM demand isn't about six public meetings per year that Soberoff promised two years ago that they didn't do this year. It's about having all community meetings. And... Um, City council and all subcommittees have a online availability to put a comment in on the record, and this doesn't. You're the civilian oversight board, and nobody that Thank can't you, come at 9.30 on a Tuesday morning can submit a comment. Thank you, sir. For what? For your comments today. We do appreciate it. I uh, can tell. Your two minutes are now up, and uh, the final item is a uh, motion for adjournment. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We now stand adjourned. You violated the Brown Act. Actually, no, sir. We did not under the consultation with the city attorney. Thank you.